there's anything to say about Bloodborne, this new IP and game from developer From Software, which is published by Sony Computer Entertainment, is that Bloodborne is actually and possibly one of the best games of 2015. This game is so rewarding and so satisfying that even though you will die and die a lot, at the same time it feels rewarding just when it happens. Bloodborne is a game about patience, virtue, and about surviving to the end. But it's also about punishing and learning to be in pain while trying to learn from your mistakes. This makes Bloodborne that much more unique and that much more better than Dark, um, From Software's last titles, the Dark Souls series and Demon Souls. And I'll go deeper into why here. First, let's go into the story. The story of Bloodborne is a lot like the Dark Souls series, as they never tell it straight out. Instead, it's told through descriptions of items you find. But I'll tell you what the main concept is about. It takes place in a city called Yarnia, which is inspired by like Neo Victorian London setting, which happened when a curse of a Bloodborne disease has caused the civilians and citizens to go crazy, be disfigured, and start becoming murderers, but also turning them into creatures of the unknown to the point where they are no longer human. This makes uh, actually the story that much more disturbing. They try to figure out what's going on with them. And this way your character comes in, who is a hunter. And this hunter gets actually gets a blood transfusion with the bloodborne disease. But somehow he's not like the others. He's not crazy, insane, or loose in the head. Instead, your character, who is a hunter like I said before, is also dealing with the Knight of the Hunt. A night when all the hunters, just like your protagonist, is dealing with killing all anyone that's out at night. Killing any humans, monsters, or anything else that threats the hunters themselves. And this is where your character comes in. But actually the story here really just gives you an excuse to go out at night and kill all these insane design creatures. And that's a good excuse, as Bloodborne does it all perfectly. Now, the developers had created a game that's just as hard as Dark Souls, but at times it feels even harder. And that's great, as the combat here is a lot more better than the Dark Souls series. Now, I already told you the main concept of the story, and the game could take you around 60 to 80 to 100 hours just to beat on your first playthrough. And there's also two different endings for the main story, though. and that's saying a lot, as you might even take more than 200 hours just to beat the game twice, just to unlock New Game Plus. And holy crap, New Game Plus is even a harder experience than the first time around. Now, let's go into the gameplay here, as gameplay is something else that's also important in the Bloodborne series. Gameplay has to be smooth, it has to be slick, it has to work, and it has to have a system that works perfectly to the point that if you press a button, your character reacts. And surprisingly, Bloodborne li li lives up to that system. Now, in the system, it's all about difficulty. The game is hard as hell, it will beat you down to the ground until you learn how to get back up and keep moving forward. Now, it's always hard, but is it too hard to the point where it's impossible to play? No. Bloodborne always gives you an idea or a way to figure your way out of a situation. And he does it through subtle situations or subtle scenarios that you always have to deal with. Like dealing with a pack of werewolves and trying to figure out how to get through them. You go in a house and wait for them by the front. While that's a grinding type of statue, it also helps you out in a way where you don't lose all your health. Now the gameplay here is a lot of ideas behind it. Mostly it comes to the weapons you use and it's fast, smooth combat up until its final bosses which are intense at times and disturbing. Let's not forget that the weapons in this game are amazing and also unique to each person. Every single player who plays the game will have a unique favorite weapon, have their own different weapon that's unique from the others, as you can craft with that weapon, enchant it, give it special abilities, and even more. Now, at the beginning of the game, you have three choices. You have a saw cleaver, a hunter axe, or best of yet, a threaded cane. But every weapon has a secondary trigger behind it. If you press L1 on your PS4 controller, you can actually have a secondary mode. For the axe, it extends the axe to a one-hand axe or a two-hand axe. For the cane, it turns your normal cane stick, which is powerful, into a whip with blades on it. And your saw cleaver can also turn into a normal blade, just from short distance to a weapon made for long distance. This covers more distance, just like I said, but it also makes the game that much more unique, because when you find more weapons, and those more unique designs, and how to use those weapons, you 
always want to know how to use it. All it has to use you with a second ability to your advantage. Surprisingly, Bloodborne does this all perfectly. Not one weapon feels cheaper than the other. Not one weapon feels weaker. They all feel the same. They all have power behind it. And they all have a feeling that you can make it through the night of hell. That's a good thing, as Bloodborne has a lot of moments where it will scare the crap out of you. As this game is survival horror, don't get me wrong. It's not like Evil Within or Alien Isolation survival horror, but it's a unique one. As if you, as the enemy and creature designs in this game are so disturbing that at times I get nightmares just from thinking about it. Survival horror games never really give me nightmares like the ones I got from Bloodborne, as Bloodborne's nightmares have really put in some disturbing designs of people with bug heads or weird creatures with sharp mouths but no actual body there. Ooh, just talking about it puts a chill up my spine. And saying that, even the boss battles themselves have some really unique designs behind it, like a spider queen, to a gigantic juggernaut, to a cleric beast with which, which one arm is bigger than the other, and even more from a normal hunter who turns to a gigantic monster. All these boss battles are unique, also have a unique design behind them. But that's not the only people you have to worry about. You also have to worry about the monsters that's in the streets. But other thing you have to worry about is the corrupt hunters you encounter. The corrupt hunters are humans who are corrupted from the disease, however they're not turned into monsters like evil crows or anything like that. Instead, they're just mentally crazy, and they'll do anything they can to kill you. What's cool about these things is that you can either avoid them completely, or you can challenge them. What's cool about that is that if you challenge them, you might also get the chance of getting the weapons. For example, there's a crow character at the beginning of the game, so you can find them. And if you find him and defeat this crow hunter, you also get its weapons, and you can also get its clothing, which is a crow jacket, a crow mask, and a crow leather uh, boots and gloves. What's cool about it is that the customization of the costume you wear, the attire, the shirt, the hat, the boots, and the gloves, is that it all gives you a, like, a personality, but also gives you a way to defend yourself. As a hat maybe have a stronger poison resistance than your gloves, which have a better fire resistance or a paralysis resistance. This makes it much more unique and makes customization that much more rewarding. Just because you buy a hat, it never feels like that hat is worthless or pointless. Everything you get, everything you touch, everything you gather has meaning behind it. And that makes Bloodborne that much more unique. You also have secondary weapons like pistols or shotguns or flamethrowers. But these things never fully help you. Instead, they're mostly like secondary stun weapons, which is stuff that can stun the enemy for a second while you take advantage of it. This makes my blood run much more faster, as the enemies that are the same speed as you are times even faster to the point where you might not even survive certain situations. And the boss battles, like I said before, are harder and much more tougher, and a lot more quicker than before in other games. This makes the game much more on your feet and on your toes. You never are sitting back in your chair relaxing while you play the game. Instead, you're always face first, just like in front of your screen, standing up from your bed, or sitting on the edge of your seat, wanting to figure out how to survive the situation. How do you fight a boss that lunges at you all the time with a poisonous uh, venom in it that kills you instantly? You always have to find a way around it. While the game is hard, and you lose all your currency, which is blood echoes, every single time you die, it never feels unfair. Trust me when I say this, it all feels fair, and it all feels like a system that actually works. While other games like Dark Souls may feel unfair to others, this game makes it all fair by having a, a battle system that makes it feel like you actually have a chance. This is all that makes the game even much more better than before. And visually, the game is a beauty to look at, with details in the backgrounds, the blood on your character's jacket as you kill more enemies, and the visual quality of the game at a 1080p and a 30 frames per second, it all looks great. However, the frame rate is never perfect. Every once in a while when a bar will gets too intense or there's too many enemies on screen, the frame will drop every once in a while. But that's not my big problem. My big problem is the other technical issue, load times. However, there has been a patch for the load times being fixed up already, but saying that, I'm playing the game, I'm reviewing the game as when it came out as release. And personally, the load times were kind of long, lasting from 40 seconds to a minute max. And this is just on PS4, and there is no other PC version, so PS4, the, the load times are long. However, the patch has lowered the load times down a little bit longer, so that's a good thing. Saying that though, Bloodborne still is a game that punishes you and, and it's still satisfying. 
just like Dark Souls and Neon Souls before it, when you uh, actually want to play online, you can. And multiplayer works perfectly. I'll give you some reasons. There's, uh, you also get these two items for each uh, mode. For example, you know, there's a red ring at your little base where you protect yourself from all monsters, which is a lamp, like the bonfire. You teleport to the Traveler's Dream, and there you can buy two rings. A blue one, which allows people to join you in co-op, or a red one, which allows people to invade your your world, or you to invade theirs. Warning, though, is that if you allow people to join you in co-op, you risk the chance of someone coming in to ruin your match, making you lose all your blood echoes. <laughs> While it seems unfair, this is the normal way that how the um, multiplayer system works. And personally, I think the multiplayer is amazing. I haven't got a chance to like, get any catch or any gameplay footage of me playing multiplayer, but I only played once or twice online co-op with a few people. And to say that it was fun is an understatement. It all feels fun, yes, but it also feels rewarding, like I said. It's also a challenge, and it also feels fair. And it's also recommended that you also buy a headset if you're gonna play with friends because this game requires a headset because these moments are intense and satisfying overall. And that's saying a lot in blood. The story, like I said before, yes, may not uh, be like straight out and told, but told through descriptions, like I said before. And I'm repeating myself, but I just want to make sure you guys understand what I'm saying here is, is that Bloodborne is a game that no one should regret playing. I picked it up at a, at a lower price, I'm not gonna say what. But, if you guys really want the true, hardcore experience that you thought you never got with Dark Souls, then Bloodborne can be your game. And that's saying a lot. So, this is going down to my final verdict of the game, Bloodborne. And I said a lot of the game so far. But overall, let's just go over what we know so far. Visually, it is a beautiful game with great detail. The music, I forgot to mention, is top-notch and beautiful with great tones, and when the monsters and bosses show up, the music gets so much intense that you feel like you're in a horror film. Also, sound design-wise, the game has great sound design, with gory crunches and biting sound effects which is all amazingly well done. Gameplay is a lot more better than Dark Souls, with a better combat system and an inventory. You also have better online features, however, the game suffers from a, a, a really bad loading time. But how are these loading sets are never enough to really destroy the game for me. Or personally, I don't think the game has actually deserves to be any lower uh, scored. Overall, the Bloodborne is a masterpiece of a game in my personal opinion. Which is why I'm going to have to give Bloodborne the only score I believe it deserves. And that is an overall score of a 10 out of 10. In other words, a masterpiece. Bloodborne is a game that challenges you so you'll back potential to do the best as you can, and when it does, Bloodborne is a game that will satisfy you to your core, making you feel happy for what you've done. I actually wrote this down a few days ago on my notepad, saying that Bloodborne is truly, and it is truly, a punishing game, but it's also a game that just as much as it takes from you, it also gives you so much more that you never felt like it was all for nothing. The 60 to 100 hours of your first playthrough, or maybe even second playthrough, will be worth it. Just when the end credits of the first playthrough was one, I always feel like I want to play a second time. There's something about Bloodborne that feels addicting, that feels like it's fun, and it's a fun RPG of some sort of some way. A Japanese RPG, too, but it's also one that feels satisfying and never unfair. And this is a big surprise for me, you know? I never played like Dark Souls 2 or Demon Souls, I did play Dark Souls, but saying that Bloodborne is a game that I truly recommend to anyone and everyone who has a PS4. However, I don't recommend it if you don't like hard games, but I, I do recommend that you at least try it. Re rent it at least. Just for the chance to get something new, not get the same easy stuff over and over again. I'm glad that From Software is a gaming company that knows how to make some of the best games on earth. And I'm glad that they are still working today. You know? So please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook as Michael Martinez. Also like the vi uh, also follow me on Twitter as the Michael M nineteen eighty seven. Like I said, you can subscribe to my channel the Michael nineteen eighty seven. You can also comment below, tell me what you think about the game and your personal thoughts. Did you love the game? What do you think about it? And do you th and which game is the hardest in your opinion from Front Software's title of hardcore games? Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 2, or Bloodborne? Which is the most hardest in your personal opinion? 
You can say that in the comments. Personally, I love Bloodborne. I think it's one of the hardest games of them all, in my personal opinion. So guys, that's it for this video, guys. For more reviews like this, like my The Order 1886 review, or my Evolve review, or many others I've done in the past, bring your Blood Hunters to my channel, Michael M 1997 on YouTube. Uh, thank you guys for all watching this video, and my review of Mortal Kombat X will be coming soon, along with a review of The Evil Within, The Consequences, which will also be coming soon as well. So, thank you guys for watching this video, thank you so much, and actually guys, here's some more footage of me playing Bloodborne, okay? This is D. Michael M. 1997, signing off.